Darlene here from Darlene's Garden at Mark Wurdemanos in Athena, Oregon. Coming to you on this Sunday morning. Well, mm -hmm. it's actually Sunday afternoon. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's get on with the video. I think we can do that. Okay, I'm busy today cutting up this jack-o'-lantern. We bought it oh, oh, a couple weeks ago, maybe, and then kept it until we didn't carve it until Halloween Day. We carved it well, in the afternoon, and then it was ripped. My husband put, actually, he carved it, and then we put a um, battery-powered light on the inside, and and a walkie-talkie, and then we had walkie-talkies, so when people came up to our house, the pumpkin talked to them. Nothing scary, of course, just kind of a bit of fun, and it was fun. Anyway, um, spending today cutting it up and putting it, in, cutting it into chunks, and then using my food saver and making packages to put in the freezer. So that's what I'm up to right at the moment. Using my axes as a cheese knife, but it works really well for, I cut this like, I'll cut it about like so. I don't know if I could do it with one hand. Oh, I can. Well, kind of. <laughs> and then, and then I lay it on its side and And take the peeling off. But I'm not going to try that with one hand. The other hand is holding the camera. <laughs> and I'm making sure to label my my food saver bags so that I know when, what it is. And not that I would forget, but you never know, I might squash and pumpkin kind of look alike. And then putting a date on it. Not the day, date, but the month. The month and the year is close enough. And so that's what I'm up to now. I still have more apples to do, and some of them are getting bruisey. But, and that's a, that's a piece of sweet potato that I partially used. But I ordered an apple peeler, peeler core slicer, and it's supposed to come, it was supposed to come um, Thursday, then Friday, and then Monday. It's coming FedEx, and I, <clears throat> I have a problem with things coming FedEx, because they always seem to go around Robin Hood's barn, as the saying goes, before they get to us. And anyway, it's supposed to be here tomorrow, so I will finish up my apples as soon as I get, as soon as I get my apple core peeler because I don't want to do any more of them by hand. That's just too hard. I'll still have to cut out the bad spots, but that'll be easy to do once they're peeled and cored. And here I have some dough rising and it's just about ready for me to do something with. It's the recipe off of family traditions that uh, Kevin from family traditions uh, explained how to make English muffins and so that's what I'm making. They're supposed to be better than store-bought ones so I guess we'll find out. Anyway, not quite warm enough in here for the to, it's supposed to take about an hour to rise. It's going to take a little longer but it's almost there because it's not quite as warm in here as it probably should be. Let's see. It's only well, this says it's 74, <laughs> and outside it's warmed up to 52. Wow, this says it's 76 in here, so it depends on where the sensor is, I guess. We have not had a night for a week or two that's been above 32. It's been running in the, well, for a while the low 20s, now the high 20s. Well, we even had, uh, I think... I shared on Facebook, but I don't know if I shared with you guys, down 15, 16 
for a couple of nights and then up to the mid 20s and like last night it was it was um like 26 I think something like that so still cold cold at night I haven't gone out to see how my things under my low my low tunnels are doing I probably should it it's been pretty cold and I only have a single layer on them so who knows they might be dead but at least I tried. So, since I'm back in this part of the house, I will come back here and just give you an update on my plants. I've harvested off of these microgreens a couple of times already. I didn't know if when I cut them down they would regrow, but it looks like maybe they, some of them are getting more leaves even though I cut them off. So that's good. Here I have some orange peels that are drying. I think they're dry already, but I'll give them a little while to make sure there's no moisture in there. Some things up here too under my purple grow light. Or red, red and blue, that makes purple, huh? The rest of everything there. The tomatoes are, despite the fact that I've been, that I've been watering them, they're dying. So I'm just gonna think, cut them off. Oh, I have a tomato getting ripe. Cool. Those are, but that, that one too is kind of deciding to die. It's got one little, couple of branches that are fairly lifelike. But I was hoping I could keep them good in the house. And this plant's still doing okay. That's the one I didn't mark down what it was when I planted it. It looks like some kind of a, Lavender, but it doesn't smell or taste like lavender. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> eggplants, and I don't know if I'll actually get any eggplants, but the plants look interesting. And some mint. That one's chasing the window. And oh, that pumpkin I'm carving out. Here's all the seeds from it. I need to. I need to come in here when I don't have the camera in. This log goes from the paper towel. I will say, oh, we might eat a few of them, but I know. Yeah, I think we should eat a few of them. These are, oh, I planted all these like pumpkins running around my ears. The pumpkin that I've got, we bought at the store. But I can plant some of these seeds next spring. And get some pumpkins. So I'll come back and work on the rest of those later. Oh, there's my English muffins, and I called the name of that the person that where I got the recipe. I said family tradition, traditions is actually living traditions, and Kevin's the one that showed us how to do it. And so look up Living Traditions and look for the video that shows how to make English muffins. And they are just the right texture and everything. So I'm anxious to have those for breakfast. And I almost have the pumpkin done, but I'm going to sit and rest for a while because my back's hurting and probably five or ten minutes of rest and I'll be able to finish this up. Then I'll have the pumpkin done, waiting for my apple corer and peeler slicers to come tomorrow and I will finish the apples and I will be really glad to have, to have my canning pretty much done. So I'm going to finish up this video by just doing a little, I'm going to call it a mini devotional. Just, I wanted to talk about sermons that I've heard the last three days. I feel like I've been to church three days in a row. Both Friday and Saturday we attended a funeral, two, two different funerals obviously, one on Friday, one on Saturday, and then today was just regular church. All three times. 
we heard really, really good sermons. Well, two of them by our pastor, because he did one of the sermons and that, or one of the funerals, and then uh, a pastor from Walla Walla did the one that we went to on Friday. And the messages all the way around were just really good. The one, the one on Friday, the thing that that I got out of it, of course, he was talking about the the older lady. She was ninety eight years old, uh, the mother of our neighbor across the street. She lived a long and fruitful life. But the sermon, the part of the sermon that really spoke to me was he was talking about the scripture that says, where Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told what I've told you. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. And one of the disciples asked, well, how, how do we get there? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. Well, the thing that the pastor brought out was had, had to do with the the traditions of the time when Jesus was living. You know, nowadays we think about, okay, Jesus went to prepare us a, a dwelling place, and that's, don't think anything about it, I just take it at face value and, and think, oh boy, that's good, I've got something to look forward to, a place to live when I die and go to heaven. But there was actually a deeper significance of that in the time that Jesus lived, when a man and a woman wanted to get married, they first went through an engagement, they called it a betrothal. And that was as binding as the marriage. And what happened was they, the groom would go to the bride's house and ask for her hand and then promise, they would pro be promised to each other and they could not live as man and wife yet. But what happened was that the groom would go back to his own home and where his parents lived, he would build on a structure, a building, a house, if you will, for, his, for he and his bride. That house was part of his father's house. So when, when Jesus said, in my house, I will build a mansion or a dwelling, it, it was like the groom was building a house for himself and his bride. They weren't living with his parents, but their house was part of his parents' house. So it enlarged the family and that was part of preparing for the marriage. After, as soon as the house was built, then he would go back and get his bride, and they would become married and be man and wife, and go and live in the house that he had prepared for her. So the significance of that is that Jesus is preparing for all of his people, all of everyone who accepts him, everyone that comes to the Father through him. Our house in heaven, in his Father's house, the same as the man in Jewish, in, back in Jewish times, um, Jesus' time, did for his bride. So I, the Bible somewhere indicates that the church is the bride of Christ. And, and so that's, it all ties together that way. And I had never heard it explained that way. It just, it, I, I enjoyed, well, I like history in the first place, but I enjoyed that little historical part to it that made it more significant. It isn't just that 
we're going to have a place to live when we go to heaven. It's that we specifically are the bride of Jesus. All of us are. I mean, I know guys have a hard time thinking in, in terms like that, but the meaning is there. That means that we are connected. We are part of Jesus, and he is preparing a place for us in God's house so that we can be there with him. And that just, I really enjoyed that part of the sermon. And then, yesterday's sermon was good too. And today, this morning's sermon at church, the pastor was talking about, why are we afraid? And and the lesson was about when Jesus and his disciples were out in the lake in the boat. And even though four, I think four part of the disciples were fishermen, they were used to being out in the in the lake. But even so, this big storm came up and they were frightened. And Jesus had been sleeping down in the bottom of the boat and they woke him up and said, Master, aren't you going to do something about this? We're scared. We're frightened. And Jesus asked him, why are you frightened? Don't you know I'm here? I can, I can handle this. You can tell because they knew, they asked him what he was going to do about it. They knew somehow or another that Jesus had the power to take care of the storm. But at the same time, they didn't realize it deeply enough to not be afraid, because if they had truly understood what Jesus, who Jesus was, they would not have been afraid. But as you, you know, continue and read, read the story, you know that Jesus did, did calm the storm. So, and the significance of that lesson was that in our today's society, we have a lot to be afraid about. But we can hear Jesus asking us, why are you afraid? Don't you see that I'm here? I'm, I'm handling your life. I'm helping you. No matter what happens, even if Jesus hadn't calmed that storm, he was there and he was protecting them in his own way. He was, they were together and they understood his power, but he did calm the storm and he can calm our hearts, I think is what I'm trying to get to here. It, the circumstances in which we live might not change, but how we handle the circumstances, our attitudes, our thoughts, we can calm down and, and not stress out about politics or finances or relationships gone awry or any of those things that we worry about. Remember Jesus saying, don't be afraid. Don't you know that I'm here? And so we need to remember to tap into the power that Jesus has and to know that in our lives, he is the one that can keep us calm and calm our fears, help us not to be afraid of whatever lies ahead. Because many of us have lots of fears about the unknown. That's the main fear, the unknown. What's going to happen? What if this happens? What if that happens? Those what ifs. Uh, yeah, sure, we need some of them in order to plan appropriately for a lot of things, but not to the point of being frightened about them. Leave it in God's hands. He will help us work it out. And he will help us not to be afraid. Well, that's my devotional for today. Just sharing with you the things that I learned this weekend. The points that came across to me. And I was thankful for both of those sermons. Well, and the one yesterday, too. And I would have shared what they talked about yesterday, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I just knew at the time it was good. <laughs> Isn't that funny? 
the one on Friday and the one this morning are the two that stuck in my head. So another thing that's going on in my life, I have a kind of a friend, well, he's really more of an acquaintance. We were in a Toastmaster club a year or so ago with him, a different club than the one we go to all the time. And he emailed me, oh, maybe a month or so ago, and he said, I'm, I'm working on writing a book. I, would it be okay if I sent it to you for you just to kind of review it and see what you think? And I said, sure, that's okay. Well, I didn't think anything more about it. This big package came in the mail yesterday. And so I've got this bo uh, book. It's 100 pages of uh, regular typing size paper, single-spaced. <laughs> I've started. I'm on page 12. And so he said, get out your red pen and, <laughs> and you know, start letting me know what you think. Well, of course, the teacher and he told me to put my teacher hat on, which means that while I'm reading, I tend to fix the grammar. Uh, I can't help it. I just do. But it's it's very deep, and I need to figure out a way, to, as I read through it, to let him know. He doesn't need to change what he's saying, but he needs to figure out, it needs to it, figure out a way so that people are going to want to read it and not get bogged down on the deepness of it. He's being very, uh, I'm going to use the word philosophical, about life and responsibilities and just uh, things like that. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be good. It reminds me of a, what you might read as a, a textbook or a Bible study. Well, it isn't a Bible study because it's not a, it's not particularly Christian oriented, although he's got some references in there to to Christian ways of thinking. So uh, I know it's going to take me a while to get all the way through it. Like I said, I'm only on page 12, but then I only got the book yesterday. So I just, if you're the kind of person who prays, pray for me so that as I go through it, I know exactly what I need to tell him so that he makes he so that his book ends up being successful because you know the whole key to a book being successful is that you get people wanting to read it and then he has no idea how to go about publishing it and they do i do know a little bit about that part of it so i can um that part i'll be able to kind of guide him through at least at least the way that i that i know how to do it because i've published a, a a little booklet before on um, through kind of Amazon, Amazon, but anyway, I I just need my own guidance to make sure that that I'm actually helpful to him. Anyway, so that's that's where I'm at with that, and of course my my indoor gardening I showed you. And finishing up my pumpkin, my apples, and that's that's about it for this week. Thank you if you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. I would love to subscribe to yours if I haven't already, but YouTube's not letting me. Every time I try to subscribe to a channel, it says. You have too many, subs you have subscribed to too many people in comparison with how many people have subscribed to you. So I looked and I think I've subscribed to about a thousand people, maybe. Because if I watch a video and like the video, I tend to want to subscribe to their channel. So that if they make more videos, I have the option of whether I want to watch it or not without having to search through YouTube to find it. <laughs> I get notified. 
And I like that. And I'm just a little a little YouTuber, so obviously I don't have I only have just right around three hundred subscribers. I don't know what YouTube's thinking. I don't know how many subscribers I have to have before I can subscribe to more sites myself. So if you know that if I've watched your videos and I like them, but I haven't subscribed, don't get your feelings hurt. It's not because I don't want to. It's because YouTube won't let me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we have to deal with unusual things sometimes. Anyway, thank you. And I do hope you hit that like button. And share the video if it, if it meant something to you and you have someone that you think would enjoy listening to me ramble on. <laughs> May the good Lord richly bless you. And I will see you on my next video, probably next Sunday, but you never know, I might get one before then.